What is up guys, this is Luke Hill for KitGuru and I'm sat here with a batch of really high-end hardware and we're going to build a workstation. So basically this project came about, Gigabyte reached out to us and said do you want to use some of our hardware to build a workstation around the 3990X 64 core Threadripper CPU? So we said yeah, why not? So we've got the TRX40 Aorus Master, we've got a couple of 5700XT Aorus graphics cards, we've got some Aorus RGB memory, we've got the Aorus Gen 4 SSD, of course we've got the 3990X Threadripper, and we're going to put in a fractal case with Noctua cooling. Let's have a closer look at some of the parts and explain why we chose these. First up, we've got the Ryzen Threadripper 3990X from AMD. This is the 64-core flagship. That's about $4,000 or about £3,700 in the UK. This is an obvious choice. It's the best CPU on the market, especially if you're a workstation user. Absolute no-brainer if you want to build a beast of a workstation and try and leverage all 64 cores. It'll be interesting to see if we can actually do that with our use cases. We've got the Gigabyte TRX40 Aorus Master Motherboard. It's a very good motherboard, especially when you look at the price. We were particularly fond of the power delivery solution, which uses a true high multi-phase controller from Infineon. The VRM cooling is pretty good indeed with a finned heatsink, and the overall layout works really well for us. You can handle up to 3M.2 SSDs, which is plenty for our usage. The board looks good. It isn't overpowering with the RGB, and you get good control overall through the UEFI and the fan curves. We've got a couple of Aorus cooled and Aorus branded RX 5700 XT graphics cards, so the new Navi graphics cards. Now, yes, I know these are not the most powerful graphics cards on the market, but we're using the AMD system. We've got AMD hardware elsewhere, so we thought, let's just keep it all AMD on the graphics front. We've got a couple of these, and hopefully we're going to be able to put both of them to use in either compute scenarios or perhaps, you know, compute plus gaming, because who doesn't love to do gaming while they're waiting for their renders to finish? So both of these cards have a triple fan cooler with RGB LED, the fans are actually 82 millimeters in diameter and the cooler is about three slots in thickness. So we are hoping that this should give very good thermals and hopefully low noise operation. Another big benefit is the display outputs. We've got plenty of display outputs for our multi-monitor solution that we're gonna use in our actual workstation environment. For memory, we've got 32 gigabytes of Aorus RGB DDR4 modules. These are DDR4 3600 megahertz. Of course, 3600 is the main thing with the Infinity Fabric tie-in frequency. Interestingly, these are two by eight gigabyte modules in each kit, so we get four by eight gigs to give us 32 gigabytes in quad channel, but they also have two dummy modules per kit, so four dummy modules in total. And this is pretty cool, because it allows us to fill all eight slots on the motherboard, even though four of those are dummy modules. It just looks cool, it looks consistent. Another key benefit for these memory modules is that they're very low profile, and that's really good because it gives us plenty of flexibility with our CPU cooler choice for avoiding interference. SSD-wise, we've gone with the Aorus Gen 4 NVMe 2TB SSD. This is going to be our main scratch drive, so all our heavy read-write operations are going to go through this SSD. It does come with the copper heatsink, but we won't be using that. We're going to be instead using the heatsinks underneath the motherboard. And then we're using a WD Black NVMe SSD for the OS drive. CPU cooling, we've gone with an Noctua U14S. And the reason we've gone with this is because of the specific str4 tr4 if you prefer version with the large cold plate it is apart from the pro siphon elite the best cpu cooler we've tested with the 64 core threadripper very very competent performance and we've got another fan to go on there just so we can have dual fan operation in terms of power we know the cpu can draw well over 600 watts from the wall if you let it run free with precision boost overdrive we probably won't go there we'll probably keep close to the 280 watt default TDP to keep in that efficient zone. Call it 200 to 250 watts for each graphics card. We realistically want about an 850 to 1000 watt unit to be safe for the wall power draw. So the brand is an obvious choice. Let's go see Sonic. We've got the Prime TX1000 titanium rated, 1000 watts continuous supply from the wall, hybrid fan. We're not gonna get any problems here. And then for the case, we've gone with the Fractal Meshify S2. The reason I chose this is because it's a well-sized ATX mid-tower. It isn't too big, it isn't too small, it gives us plenty of room, very good airflow, especially with our mesh front panel, and I really like the white and black design with the tempered glass side panel window. So there's our introduction for the parts that we chose. I now have an empty table, which means one thing, let's get building.
Okay, so we got our system set up. We can see all 128 threads from the 3990X. Now, first thing to do is obviously run Cinebench. And the reason I want to run this is because, yes, everybody's seen the Cinebench numbers right about now uh, since the full review. But I think that it puts it into perspective when you just see the number of squares on screen. So let's click run and let's watch. So that is what 128 render threads looks like in Cinebench R20. That is pretty crazy. If you want to run this on your own system by comparison, then you're going to see it's not going to run anywhere near this quick, trust me. So what I'm going to do now is load up Blender. And again, I know everybody's seen the Blender results, but I think that it really puts it into perspective when you see those threads churning away, all 128 of them. So the CPU, let's click Render. Let's have a look. I'm just going to close Afterburner here because it's in the way. Sorry, River Tuner. So there's 128 threads rendering in Blender. And you can see that they're just chomping through pretty quickly. So if this is your use case, if you're a 3D artist, if you deal with Blender, if you deal with rendering applications on a regular basis, this is actually quite useful to have all this throughput. If you open up Task Manager, you can see them absolutely being hammered. Obviously the frequency is dropping a bit because, like I say, the CPU cooler is favoring low noise operation, which is increasing the thermals. And then in the Precision Boost algorithm, the clocks are dropping below 3 gigahertz. We can tweak that if we want to get more aggressive on the fan speeds, but you can see that it's absolutely chomping through. And if I look at the power consumption from the wall, I'm talking about 460 watts system-wide power. The CPU is tapped out and it's 280 watts package power for a stock scenario. I think we're almost done on this. A few more seconds. Bang, you're done. So the reason this 1 minute 40 result is pretty good is because that's not an inordinate amount of time to the point where it really is slowing your workflow. You could reasonably set this to render, quickly load up your email, reply to one of your clients' email, one of your colleagues' emails. By the time you've replied to that, you can come back and your frame is rendered for you. So now what we're going to do is we've seen, just very briefly of course, what the CPU can do. Now what I want to show is what the GPUs can do in this system. So again, we're going to load up, actually let's load up the BMW test here. So this is GPU specific on this BMW test. And I'm just going to edit the preferences to run on OpenCL on both graphics. So I've got both graphics cards selected, the 5700 XTs, and I'm going to run it down here as GPU compute. So these should pick a tile each. So let's put that over there. These should pick a tile each and then they'll render. So if I load up Task Manager, and then what we want to do is look at the Compute 1. And again, Compute 1. And we can also see in GPU-Z that they're getting pushed pretty hard already. We can see the usage is, where is the usage? Load 99% and 99%. So if I back that off, you can see that the GPUs are being pushed. And we've got all of this CPU compute available to us. Now this might seem relatively inefficient, but this is ideal for multitasking. So Blender, for example, and other software packages that people use in the real world, can be used with GPUs, but you get all the CPU available to you to use with packages which aren't scaled or coded correctly to take advantage of the GPU. And there you go, and then we're done on Blender. Wow, that's very quick actually. So 51 seconds for the GPUs. Let's have a look how long the CPUs would take for that specific test. So I think the CPUs will be the CPU will be quicker, if I remember correctly. But, like I said, if you're tapping out the CPU, so you're pushing the CPU very, very hard here, and you can see all of the threads being worked. The GPUs are sat twiddling their thumbs, doing nothing, quite frankly. CPU's being pushed hard. But obviously this limits the amount that you can do with your system at the same time, because you're tapping out all your CPU resources. So even though, yeah, this is significantly quicker on the CPU, just because this CPU is so powerful. But, of course, if your other software that you want to run simultaneously doesn't take advantage of the GPU, then you're going to be limited on the CPU resources you can throw at that other piece of software in your workflow. So 37 seconds versus, I think, was it 50-something seconds for the GPUs? Yeah, 51 seconds. Now let's have a look at how long it would take two frames to render while we're loading the CPU and the GPU. So I'm just going to click GPU first. Now I'm going to quickly 
come in on the CPU. So we can see that both are being pushed at the same time. Ooh, I can feel the system slowing. I can feel the mouse lagging a little. So this GPU compute on card one and card two, they're both being pushed hard. The CPU's being pushed hard. The system power draw from the wall, wow. System power draw from the wall is about 800 watts from the wall, but we've got two frames rendering simultaneously. So I would expect to see a small slowdown on both of them. But the fact of the matter is you're getting double the throughput in whatever time period this is. So I can hear the GPU fans ramping up because they've been pushed pretty hard. CPU is done at this point. Got a few more seconds for the GPU to be done. Whatever time the GPU gives us is we know the time. So 48 seconds. So call it 50 seconds. 50 seconds to do two frames in this case. So even if you're talking 37 seconds to do one frame on the CPU, therefore you double it if you need two frames done. Actually, within 50 seconds, if you put in the GPU and the CPU to use, because you've got so much compute capability available to you to drive threads through to the CPU and the GPU, then you can get quite a bit of work done in not a significant time increase. Okay, so what I want to show here is we know that the CPU completes its render in about 37 seconds. Therefore, it takes about 14, so you get about 14 seconds of idle time when the GPU is still doing its work. So what I want to show is if we had, for example, uh, three frames to render, that would take about uh, 111 seconds on the CPU to do three frames. And therefore, in the same time period, we could do roughly two frames on the GPU. So what I'm going to try and do here is show that in that 111, so call it two minute window, we can actually get five frames done by using both the CPU and the GPU resources. And I'm hoping that that's the case. And the reason I'm doing this is because, again, you've got so much compute available to you with a system such as this that you can put these on simultaneously without well, just crashing the system, I guess. Um, or without significant slowdowns. This is the type of batch operation that people will use in a workstation type environment. Not necessarily with Blender or with rendering, but Blender is a good proxy to show how this works. I mean, if you're working in simulation engineering or design, for example, and you need to have multiple iterations of a topology optimized design or something along those lines, you can run multiple iterations. You can go away for your lunch and you can come back and you'll have several iterations queued up, ready for you to view. So the difficult thing here is actually going to be getting them to render. So if I start with the GPU, then I'll put all the CPUs on, then I'll do the next GPU. All right, so we've got GPU, CPU, 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 GPU. All right, so wow, this is pushing the system hard. <laughs> So, if I can eventually move, wow, okay. So I'll try and move the tile to show that things are being pushed. I'm hoping, in roughly, oh, and I've got to run the timer. Right, okay, so let's run my stopwatch and roughly see what it takes. So we can see the GPU is being pushed out. Ah, now, interestingly, because the CPU, wow, okay, so the fans are ramping up quite heavily because I'm pushing the GPUs very, very hard. Interestingly, because the CPU is being pushed so hard and it's having to share its resources, it's actually struggling to drive the data through to the GPU and keep them 100% loaded. So that's something we'll have to look into. There's also a bit of downtime there where the first GPU render completed and then the data needs to be driven through to the GPU for the second GPU render. So you actually see this downtime on the graph. And this is another area where 64 uh, cores, I should say, and 128 threads is quite useful because you can use a large number of cores, for example, 56 cores, and then leave eight cores, for example, which in its own accord is a very powerful CPU. Eight cores is pretty reasonable, even with tasks like this. You can leave eight cores there to, for example, manage the data flow through to the GPU to make sure they are 100% utilized. And that's an ideal scenario for this. Power draw from the wall is over 800 watts, so about 815 watts. So we're pushing pretty hard here. The GPUs, right, so the CPU runs are done. Just waiting for the final GPU run to be done. And that looks like everything is done.
Wow, okay, so we've got five frames rendered in, what was that? Pfft, less than two minutes? Not bad at all. If you need five frames on the CPU, that would be, call it 190, just under 190 seconds. But we've seen in 105 seconds here, so just under two minutes, we can actually get five frames done by leveraging the resources of the CPU, which is able to simultaneously drive a decent amount of data through to the GPU to keep them happy, whilst also rendering heavy images with its own cores. We saw with our simultaneous Blender tests that you can run the GPUs pretty hard, you can run the CPUs pretty hard, but if you're pushing the CPU very hard, plus the GPUs very hard, it actually becomes quite difficult to push data through to the GPUs when the CPU is focusing on doing its own work. So what we're gonna do here is run, let's do two tests on the GPU. And actually what I'm gonna try and do is split the GPUs. So uh, the top one will have card number one. I don't know which order these are, but let's have card number one, for example. And then let's go card number two on the bottom one. And now what I'm gonna do is load up Cinebench. And the reason I'm loading Cinebench is because you can toggle the number of cores that can be used in Cinebench. So I wanna set this on a loop because I wanna push the cores hard for an extended period of time. And instead of running 128 threads, let's give it um, 112 threads. So that leaves me with 16 threads, so basically an eight core CPU available. Uh, that amount of compute resource will be pushing data through to the GPUs. So what I wanna see here is if we can keep the GPUs pushing hard 100% of the time or close to 100%, while the CPU is also pushing very hard, but is being leveraged in a way where the multi-threadedness of this CPU is being used to push other components at the same time. So let's have a look. So first of all, I'm gonna run Cinebench and just load up the CPU. This is on loop, so obviously there's some uh, technicalities when the loop is, well, when the render is finished and then it goes into a down cycle and then ramps up the next render. And we can see this on the chart, so it'll finish the render it'll then process the data for the next render. So you get a small spike or a drop in the chart. Yeah, there you go. So you can see the drop in usage, but it's for a very brief period of time. So we can see 91%, we're pushing, okay, about 91% of our CPU resources. That should leave us, hopefully, enough resources to push through to the GPUs heavily. So let's give that a shot. So the GPU compute, GPU compute. I should say the power draw from the wall at this point of the CPU only is about 440 watts. If we look at Ryzen Master, it's probably, yeah, there you go. It's 100% of the 280 watt package power because the car, the CPU, even though it's using less cores than it has available, it's just ramping up the frequency to compensate. This is Precision Boost 2 in a nutshell with a good motherboard like the Aorus Master. It just works very well. If you've got a powerful VRM, it'll take all the juice you can give it and it will abide by these tolerances. Very, very smart. I really do like Precision Boost. So let's load up the GPU's rendering. So you've got both images rendering there. Should be able to see in the GPU compute shortly. So it looks like we've got both cards. So we've got both cards being pushed close to 100%. Not quite peak at 100%, so it's slightly spiky. Okay, so that's not bad. So we're keeping a relatively high usage. If we load up GPU-Z, we see Cinebench is still running in the background. If we load up GPU-Z, we can see that the... Where are we looking? We're looking for the GPU load. So we can see the percentage is, according to this, based on the sampling rate of this, GPU number one is being pushed pretty hard and staying pretty hard. GPU number two is... It's kind of, it's slightly spiky depending on the sampling rate of GPU-Z, but it's also been pushed pretty hard. So that's pretty cool. So when you allocate enough resources to be able to push those GPUs hard, you can leverage the system in a very efficient manner for both the CPU plus the GPUs. And we're talking 850 watts power draw at this point, wow, from the wall. Okay, so one of the renders is completed second GPU render is completed and now the CPU can go back to running specifically Cinebench.
So again, we've run two frame renders in not the fastest amount of time, of course, and, and do remember these renders are run on one GPU per frame. So you can't compare the 47 second result previously. You can't quite compare that because it's one GPU per frame, so you'd expect roughly a Dublin. But we've run this basically uninterrupted with the 112 thread Cinebench render in the background. So again, if you have a use case whereby you need to render a bunch of frames in a layer-wise fashion, where you've got a batch of frames to render, you could allocate, for example, 112 threads to the CPU rendering, and then you still have enough resources to push data through very efficiently to your GPUs so that they're working hard simultaneously rather than sitting there twiddling their thumbs. Okay, so similar usage here. What we're gonna do is load up both GPUs on the Blender render. And this is ideal because Blender is very efficient with GPU compute. We're gonna load, again, 112 threads on Cinebench, so let's set Cinebench running, and then we're going to bring in the Blender render. And the reason I'm using this one now, this classroom render, is because it shows you well the two GPU tiles being pushed pretty hard. We can see Cinebench running in the background, and then we can see the rendering. There's two tiles plowing along. Okay, that's not going to work. Let's do it this way. And let's get River Tuner out of the way. There you go. So you see the two GPUs plowing along nicely. Cinebench is doing his business in the background. That keeps running. Obviously, a small reduction in the score here because we did run the GPU render quite early on, so some resources are being used to drive data through to the GPU. These GPUs have been pushed pretty hard, so this is clearly pretty efficient GPU load. We're talking, well, staying above kind of high 70s, above 70 or so. Not bad at all. System power draw from the wall, 830 watts. Wow, that's pretty hard. And the reason I like this test is because, again, this is tile-based, but we've got each GPU taking a tile in the render, and then we've got CPU work going on in the background. So while this is 3D rendering, which is what a system like this would be pretty much ideal for, there are other scenarios. So my previous experience is research engineering. This could be, for example, a topology optimization test, which is using GPU resources and thereby pushing both the GPUs but you're keeping the CPU resources available to do something like a thermomechanical calculation type test, which doesn't leverage GPU compute. Alternatively, you could have a GPU based loading for the CFD or something like that. And then again, you can keep your CPU resources free if you have to do anything with the CPU, because obviously the CPU is very flexible. The GPU is not so flexible, depending on which software you're using or which industry you're working in. So there you go, your GPU render is done and Cinebench is still running in the background perfectly happy. Let's have a look at some gaming whilst also doing real work. So here I've got the GPU set to uh, GPU number one, so not GPU zero, or GPU one. And I'm going to do a GPU render using Blender. So let's kick that off. You should be able to see in a second GPU one loading up on the compute one. Yeah, here you go. So that GPU is loading up got the other GPU doing very little as far as compute goes. Therefore, I'm going to play Grand Theft Auto. I'm expecting that I should get pretty reasonable frame rates. So, yeah, this is 1080p. I've applied a resolution scale in. Uh, the settings are all pretty much maxed out. And I'm getting over 100 FPS. Very impressive. So we can see using the overlay is that the second GPU, i.e. GPU one, is fully hit, whoops, is fully hit with the Blender rendering and GPU one as is reported in Afterburner, which is actually GPU zero according to Task Manager. That's being hit hard with gaming, but I'm not seeing any noticeable slowdowns. Granted, this is not really looking at the CPU capability, but this is the type of capability you get if you're a multi-GPU workstation when you don't necessarily need to use both of those GPUs at once. You can quickly load up a game while you're rendering on the GPU and have some fun while you're waiting for that frame to render without any realistic slowdowns. Very nice indeed. Clearly doing... <sighs> Clearly doing this, however, does not make one's driving skill any better in Grand Theft Auto. Oops. Here we've got a use case which may ring true to those who are perhaps, I don't know, freelance designers or somebody who can run their work while doing a bit of gaming while they 
wait to complete. So I've got one of the graphics cards is a GPU one, so the secondary graphics card set up to do some rendering in Blender. I've got Cinebench R20 set up, and I'm toggling this with 48 threads, so 24 cores, and this is just going to loop. And then I want to see if I can play Battlefield with reasonable FPS and reasonable game time. And I'm also converting my B-roll, so this is 4K 30, 100 megabits per second, H.264 footage. I'm converting that B-roll in Handbrake. So you can see Handbrake's running right now. It's using about 35% of my CPU with Battlefield 5 running in the background. What I'm then going to do is load up Cinebench, and I'm hoping this assigns the right node. Any time today, Cinebench, come on. Any time today. Ha, there you go. So this is 48 threads of Cinebench on loop. Haha, <laughs> perfect. So that's hitting the CPU Numa node 0 according to Windows quite hard. I'm then going to run a GPU render. So this is on my GPU. I just want to quickly make sure this is the correct GPU. I want it on the secondary GPU. And it looks like it is. Yep, yeah, so that's running on the secondary. Ooh, okay, so that's pushing quite hard now. That's running on the secondary GPU. I'm now going to bounce back in. So I've got Cinebench, I've got Handbrake, I've got a GPU render. I'm now going to bounce back into Battlefield. I should have enough CPU cycles to get decent performance, hopefully. So let's have a look. Wow, okay, so I'm at, like, uh, right, okay, so I am seeing some stuttering. Perhaps I've pushed it a little bit too far. I'm at, like, 80-odd FPS. It depends on the layer, basically. Uh, with Cinebench, because Cinebench competes in a layer-by-layer -layer fashion. I am pushing the graphics cards pretty hard, as you can probably hear, and they are sandwiched back-to-back. -back. But this is handling it quite nicely. Wow, 100 FPS. So yeah, I'm getting some stutters here and there, and I could probably mess around with it a bit more and tweak it a bit more, perhaps drop the thread count in Cinebench. Uh, perhaps a slightly different conversion mode in Handbrake. Where on earth am I going? I have no idea where to go. Ah, there we go. So this is running really smooth. So I've got all my stuff running in the background, and I can uh, do some gaming while I'm waiting. Very nice indeed. Yeah, I have to make some, do with some stutters, but like a bit more tuning, or if you're just going on single player and don't mind a stutter here and there. Not bad at all. Could we call this uh, mega ta mega tasking, perhaps? This has been our build of the 64-core 3990X Threadripper with Gigabyte hardware. The Aorus Master motherboard, as we said in the review, is a good motherboard, is handled very well. And I do like these Aorus graphics cards, so thanks for Gigabyte for sending these over. I also like the RGB RAM, that looks pretty cool. And yes, I know, I'll, I'll probably turn off the RGB for a workstation, but it does look pretty cool when the system's booting up. The system performed very well. I was actually quite surprised at how well it would suit my usage. So, content creation, video editing, I didn't expect it to be particularly useful beyond 24, 32 cores. I thought 64 cores was going to be too much. But when you add handbrake compression with b-roll into the mixture and you load simultaneous handbrake runs and cues side by side it's surprising how much compute power you can actually throw at there so i was seeing 75 plus percent cpu usage very consistently with multiple handbrake cues editing 4k 30 100 megabits per second h264 b-roll video simultaneously. I actually needed more RAM in the system to feed more data through to the cores, so AMD's suggestion of one or two gigabytes per core is probably pretty reasonable actually. Maybe I should upgrade from that 32 gigs, even though these modules do look pretty cool. Like we said in our review of the 3990X, a system like this is probably pretty ideal for freelancers, for content creators, for anybody who has really demanding use cases. You've got two graphics cards in there, so if you want to do it as we did, where you run some really heavy demanding tests for your day-to-day -day work, maybe you slow them down just a touch like we did with Cinebench, but then you can load up Battlefield or Grand Theft Auto and continue playing as normal. Plenty of flexibility, and this has been a really cool, enjoyable project. Let us know what you think in the comment section down below. Any other tests you'd like to see? Anything we should have done? What would you switch if you were building this system? What is your favourite part of the system? Are you happy with everything? Just let us know what you think in the comment section down below. If you like this video, give us a like, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the bell icon to get notifications for new videos. Do all our YouTube stuff. And if you want to support us, head on over to the main Kick Guru website to see the written article with photos and more analysis. And make sure you... Head on over to our Patreon and our merch store where you can buy a cool t-shirt like this. See you next time.